Hello and welcome to episode two. This is season four. I'm gonna walk through the plan again so you know what to expect for season four, but today we're, we're gonna be sowing our seeds. And you reap what you sow, so it's important that you have really good genetics. That's the base fundamental. I prefer to have seeds. A lot of growers will make the misstep to get new cuts that they've heard of because they've got really cool names or they haven't planned ahead. And now the season's too late and they're thinking, oh, I'll just get a couple cuts from the homie, we're good. Plan ahead, take care of yourself and be the guy that gives clones but not the guy that takes clones. And I know that in my philosophy on life, that's kind of rude. I think that receiving is just as part of the friendship process as giving. One of those rules that I have for the Build a Soil Way that I want you to have a little bit of backbone and until you're really confident you're willing to sacrifice all of your plants and all of your hard work over a selected cut, treat that one like it's just a golden rule. And part of that is me popping more seeds. So I'm really excited. I got these out of the refrigerator. I do that for several reasons, but to me, it's part of the biomimicry process. So I've got the seeds and what I did is I put them in the refrigerator and I always keep mine in the refrigerator. So it's not a step when I wanna plant, I take them out of the fridge but these were not in the fridge. And so I decided to take them and put them in there over the weekend. Now they've gone through a, oh, like a winterization. They've been cold for a while. We're pulling them out, they're warming back up. I pretend like, hey, winter's over, come out of the fridge, it's springtime. It's gonna be warm and wet now. The other thing is if you keep your seeds properly, even older seeds will work really well. A lot of times we get free seeds from our friends, we have bag seeds, and then we're like, man, only two of the seeds popped. What am I doing wrong? If you set up yourself up with fresh, good genetics that you know are gonna have a high germination rate, now you can better diagnose as a rookie whether it's your planting style or whether it was the seeds. And until you have experience, it's kind of hard to tell. Instead of me talking all the details, I wanna show you and we'll discuss this as I go. Big difference this year versus other um, seasons is last season we did the auto flowers in the earth boxes and I directly sowed those seeds and I put a dome over it. You can put a cup over it, whatever you'd like, so that I have kind of the same environment right in my earth box. This time we decided to do something different. The reason why we did that is we're gonna do more auto flowers, but they don't like to be transplanted very much. They really are based on time. They're not based on photo period. What that means is you don't have forever to get them healthy and of the proper size before you go to flower. So any slowdown in their growth is gonna cause a very different result as far as yield. If you stunt them when they're young, improperly transplant over water, they're not gonna yield nearly as much. Where if you start with a photo period type plant and you make a mistake, you have infinite time to get it healthy again before you do the ramp up to flower. And you don't have to have a 10 by 10 tent. Each quadrant that we do in this series is supposed to be kind of like what you might do at home in your three by three, four by four, five by five, or even larger if you have something like this. So if you've got a smaller tent, just focus on a quadrant. If you've got something bigger, you might want not wanna do different ideas in every quadrant because it makes it more challenging, but we try to do it from an education perspective so we can keep the content really entertaining, make sure there's always something new to learn. If I do make a mistake, we can teach on camera. So let's get started. I've got the genetics. I'll tell you where they're going really quick. And then I'm just gonna get after popping the seeds. I've got the Royal Black Dog Kush. We've got the Soleil Levant and we've got the Fruit by the Funk, which is the Straw Nana Chem de la Chem. Quadrant one, Dark Owl Seeds. We've got the Marathon OG Auto. We're gonna cycle two packs of this. One pack right now. We're starting them the same time as all the other seeds. We're gonna be transplanting those and flowering those right away because they are feminized and they're autos. So we're not gonna have to wait. As soon as they get to where they're good enough, I'm gonna gently move them into the earth box. We'll discuss it that day. Everything else is gonna be one cycle for season four. Quadrant two, we're gonna be doing the Royal Black Dog Kush. Quadrant three is gonna be the Fruit by the Funk. Really excited about this. Straw Nana is one of my favorites, plus Chem de la Chem. Can't wait to see the varieties we get out of there. And then in quadrant four, we've got Soleil Levant, Kid Kaya. You've not seen me run anything of his before, but we've been growing them here for a while. A lot of the employees have really, really terpy, super flavorful and uh, beautiful. So I can't wait to show these off. Check out Kid Kaya, pretty cool packs. In any case, that is the Gelato 33 Ox Muffins. That'll be here. We've not finally decided, but I mentioned in season one, we're considering doing the auto pot. I think it does make sense and I'm willing to take a risk trying something new. So when I'm done with this episode today, I'm gonna reach out to them and then we'll just document it as we go from there. So thanks for all the feedback on that. A lot of you guys mentioned that you like them or that you'd like to see them. So I think it fits in our education model and I'm looking forward to trying that. You've noticed I've got four trays. And so I'm not gonna need all four of these, um, but I do wanna keep it where I've got one tray 
per genetic, and some of these have more than 10 seeds, I'm not gonna pop them all. I'll keep a few extra seeds for me for later. That's gonna be more than enough because I only need like three or four females per quadrant. And then what I'm gonna do is I've got a Sharpie and I've got some masking tape. It's what I typically use. You can either label each cup, which takes a little bit of time and then it's kind of foolproof, or you can label each tray as long as they're separate. That's probably what I'm gonna do today. Just kind of decide on the fly. Main thing is know what is what. If you ever mess them up, it can be a big, big issue. And believe me, it can definitely happen. So you can use any of our soil recipes for starting seeds. It could be 3.0, it could be light. This seedling soil that we make is called the Heady Start Seedling Soil. We've not even really designed a label for it. We're all about product first. And this one is one of the, is the only recipe that we use a manufactured product first instead of building it from scratch. We use ProMix, but we, we purchase in their seedling plug grade, which is their most premium, and it's been inoculated with beneficial bacteria so we don't get any of the chemical ones. But this gets the texture right, so the average grower is not gonna over or underwater and have the best chance at germination. But instead of just using ProMix, what we did is we added in worm castings, our mustard seed, and some minerals so that once the seed pops, you don't run out of steam. And normally in hydro, you'd wanna start feeding, but in living soil, we don't do that. So this has been pre-mixed to have everything the seedlings need. And we'll show you as we go what they look like. And if we think they need anything, I'll show you how to do that too. My favorite thing for seeds and for living soil to make sure that everything's kind of in motion is to have some amino acid product and a microbial. We'll discuss that as we get further. For day one, I've got RootWise, which is our microbial. And that's what I like to inoculate the water with and irrigate the seeds with right away. You can mix this right in your seeds and shake them up. Do it that way. I've done that in one episode. We've used Bovaria bassiana. Today, I'm just gonna put this in the water. And when I'm done planting all the seeds, I'm gonna mist all of them with this concoction here. That way, as soon as the seeds germinate, they're in, in touch with this beneficial bacteria and mycorrhizae, which as the plants evolve, will help them take up nutrients, manage moisture and disease better. So microbial products are great. This is our favorite in the build a soil way. I've also got the Kuyaha, which is a wetting agent. This is 60% saponin minimum, and we also have a 20%. I like the 20% a lot, especially for something like this, but I've already got this bag here, so I'm gonna use it. Either way, they're both premium products. An eighth of a teaspoon in a gallon, and I've got one gallon of water already pre-measured to put in my sprayer. I recommend using a sprayer for something like this that you don't dislodge all the seeds when you go to water, so that's what I'm gonna show today. And I'm gonna put a little bit of this in there to make sure we break the surface tension of the soil and it absorbs water properly instead of just running out the bottom. And I think that's a big help too. Living soil is about getting the moisture right. That's what fuels the biology. That's what in turn feeds the plants. So you don't wanna just like dump a gallon jug of water and splash stuff on here. You wanna take your time and do it right. That will help with that. Last but not least, I've got our horticultural aloe. This has a little bit of nutrition in it. It also has all of the beneficial compounds that come fresh from the aloe vera plant because this was harvested in that same day it was freeze dried and prepared for our use. So this just kind of rounds out the build a soil way of using plants for plants and especially the most medicinal plants like the aloe vera plant, aloe barbadensis miller. So that's what I'm gonna use for my uh, base today to wet the soil. And I'm gonna fill up the cups and get started on that. I'll label one tray at a time and just just start to fill them all up and go before I open the packs so that I've got it all prepared. Um, essentially, I just want you to be organized. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Other than that, we did sow the cover crops. So we're gonna show that afterwards. It's already germinating. I've got some EM5 left over from our cleaning and that's what I use to spray the domes down that I'm using from the last cycle and just get them clean and, and then hose them off. So, got my seeds. I'm gonna label. So quadrant one will be the autoflowers. I'll do those last. So Royal Black Dog Kush stays on there. I can use the tray next time for the same seeds or I can just pull the masking tape off. Sometimes if I don't have tape, I just literally cross them out and write on it again. Next, we're going to do the Covert Genetics Fruit by the Funk. Okay, quadrant three is going to be Soleil Levant, which I'm not good at French, but I think that's like midday sun. I don't know. You guys tell me. Who knows French? Rising sun? Soleil. I think it's rising sun, right? Levant, levitate, to rise. Come on, I can use my brain. Levant. Put that on there. Excited about the Marathon OG. Really been enjoying puffing on that autoflower from the last round. Very terpy. There's a couple ways to do this. I'm gonna open the soil and show you what it looks like. You can pre-moisten the soil. Some people dump it in like a Rubbermaid tub. They mist it a little bit. They kind of get it just right and then they fill their cups up with that but sometimes you'll overwater that. And I wanna make sure that if you accidentally add what looks like too much water, you keep some soil aside so you can kind of remix it to dry it back out. 
Instead of doing that, this soil works really well as far as the way that it takes moisture and holds it. And so I'm not as concerned with it when I'm using the seedling soil. And to show you how easy it is, I'm just gonna put the soil directly in all these cups. Then I'm gonna go through and water them with, my, with all the stuff that I like until they're the proper moisture. Then I'm gonna go through and put all the seeds in. Then I'm gonna put a mulch on there, which I don't usually do with seedlings, but it's really fun. A lot of people love to do the whole build a soil away right from the seedling cup. And so I'll show you if you're into that, the pros and cons. I'll mist it one last time to kind of glue the mulch and the seed in the top layer. I'll put the domes on and I'm literally not gonna to touch it until they all germinate. Because I've got the dome, because I'm gonna use the mulch, I'm not gonna to have to like mist them every day. If you don't have the domes, you wanna keep your environment humid and the last thing you want is the tops drying out. So beware of that limiting factor. Let's get into the soil. Our bags are like a pull string, like animal feed. It keeps them really strong so they don't break on the bottom of the pallet when we send them out. And then you can reuse the bags. There's what the seedling soil looks like. It's got a really fine texture. And this allows the seeds to germinate easily. It also holds the right amount of moisture. And of course, we've mixed in the worm castings, minerals, nutrients, all that. I've got a bucket here. I'm just gonna pour some in and then I'm gonna scoop all of my cups out of there. You don't have to do this, but on camera, it might be slightly easier than having the bag open and close on me. The moisture, it's not dry, but it's not wet enough at all to germinate seeds. So it'll be perfect to add the moisture that I'd like. I'm gonna get started with the black dog kush and I'm gonna start filling these up and we'll probably just time-lapse this. I'll do one right now so I can discuss my like protocol and then we'll go from there. Now, you don't need to get it perfectly full. If it's too full, it's gonna be hard to water because you need a little bit of lip on here to hold it like a pool so it can drain down. If I like to get it about there, which to me means I start with it full and I'm able to press it down just a little bit because it's, it's dry. There's gonna be some compaction. A lot of times I'll use four fingers like this and just kind of press it down a bit. And then when I go to water, it'll compress it that last little bit and I'll be ready to go. So let me show you this one and then I'm just gonna get after it with the rest. That's enough. That's all I really need. I'm gonna do the rest of these about to that same volume. Then we'll get back and do all the seeds once the moisture's dialed in. And I'll talk about watering as I do it. So let me just get going after this now. All right, so I've done three trays. The last one, we're gonna open the autoflower seeds and see how many seeds there are, and we'll plant that many. The pack says three, but my experience with Daz and with Dark Owl and Night Owl, there should probably be more than three in here just because they're cool like that. So I'll check, we'll open that together. I'll set those last cups up. I did wanna mention a few things while I was going. I mentioned any of our seedling, or any of our soil recipes works. You don't have to use the Heady Starts seedling soil. This does make it slightly easier as far as moisture to not over and undershoot it. Main reason we designed this is we also have a vegetable farm. And when you've got 72 trays or 50 or even higher count in those little cells, this soil fits in there perfect. And when you moisten it, the tray isn't so heavy. It's easier to keep it even when you've got thousands of them, okay? Most of our customers, they use build a soil light and they love using that for starting their seeds. And I've always believed that what you start your seeds in should be similar to what you're gonna be placing them in their final home. So that follows suit. However, this is a new product. We've had really good feedback about it. So now I'm ready to go on to the next step. I've got one gallon of water in here and I've got that filtered. I use the tall boy filter. Some people ask if they can use reverse osmosis. That's fine. I typically stay away from water that's totally devoid of any minerals. You know, there's no creek or river or rainwater that's like that. And I try and follow something a little bit more natural. Doesn't mean you have to go buy spring water or go get a water filter. Just, just use what you have. And so just know water sourcing is important. Most of us that are doing indoor stuff have water that's at least potable enough to go through the pipes to your house and be of a neutral pH for tap water. So it should work, but I'm just trying to put two things. One, don't overthink it. If you've got generally good water, it tastes good and everything. Two, if you know there's a problem, make sure you address that, right? Because it can be not a big deal for most of us, but some people have a, hard, have a really big problem with their water. So research that. We can talk about more if you've got questions. Into the water, I'm gonna do my Rootwise, my aloe, and my wetting agent. You don't need to do this. Seeds can start without any of these things. What's in the soil is good. You don't even need the wetting agent because the seed will actually, its job is when it comes into moisture to pull the moisture into itself. Challenges is that if there's a dry pocket, you're new to this, it could be challenging to know if it's watered properly and this just helps get it right. So we really like recommending products at Build a Soil that make it easier for everyone to succeed, kind of widen that sweet spot so it's easy to hit right in the center. This is definitely one of those. So this is an eighth teaspoon per gallon. You know me, I don't really measure everything. I encourage you to if you're brand new because then you know exactly what you're doing, but I'm just gonna put a small amount in here. That's probably a little bit less than an eighth of a teaspoon. There's a little bit of debris in there from the seedling soil that's in here, 
but you can see right away it starts to bubble up and kind of make that foam. That's what the saponins do, and that helps spread the moisture throughout the soil. So I've got that. Normally I just use my chapin. That's what I'll use to mix it when I put the microbes in. When I'm doing an initial inoculation, I like to go a little hard. So in this gallon, I probably want to put about a teaspoon in here. So that's about the teaspoon, maybe a little on the extra side. I'm just going to put it in there. That will start to drop into the bucket. It looks really cool when it does it. And this one, if you follow the directions in the back, it says one teaspoon per gallon. So I'm going to do about a teaspoon. Drop that in. That's everything that I'm gonna use. I get really good results when I use this concoction. It's one of my favorite ones to use. I recommend you do the same if you've got the products. If not, don't overthink it, okay? Just get your seeds popped. That's the most important part. You can see some of the humic acid and some of the aloe dropping in and starting to kind of automatically mix in. Questions about microbes and all that? There is a lot to know, but at the same time, you don't have to understand it all to get the benefit. There's a lot of microbial products in the market. For me, it's really important to work with a supplier that gets all of its microbes um, fed on organic substrate, non-GMO food, also growing in a lab that's in the United States. And I don't mean to dog other countries at all. There's a lot of great other countries, but I don't trust the importation and the, the actual name of the microbe that you're trying to buy from an overseas seller. By the time it gets here, there's been horror stories across the entire microbial like business model, so to speak. Number of microbe companies have come and gone since build soil has been around. A number of them were making ridiculous claims about yields and terps and all these things, and were proven to be fraudulent. So just make sure you buy from a reputable dealer. Rootwise is my absolute favorite. That's why we use it and we talk about it because I know it's never gonna come back to bite me. Really, really good products made in the USA. Um, so I'm mixing it up. You can see it's really foamy, looks great. Now I'm just gonna pour this into my sprayer. If you don't have a sprayer, you literally could use something like this. This is what I had the EM5 in. You can use anything, but you're gonna break your hand trying to do this and there's a whole bunch to do. You can buy a little plastic sprayer anywhere from the garden store, Home Depot. Just don't use one that's been used for chemicals. But I use the Chapin because it lasts a long time. Back in the day, Coot turned us on to these concrete sprayers. We're all using the red one. This one's stainless steel, so it lasts, uh, holds up a little bit better. It's kind of ridiculously expensive for what it is, but they work so well it's become kind of the beacon that you've gone fully down the rabbit hole when you get a chapin like you're spending a couple hundred bucks on a sprayer just for your garden like it's a little silly but you don't have to do it i just like explaining the history of like why we came to these decisions every single thing we do has a reason and if i haven't pointed it out ask i love describing where this all all the history came from so i've got this mixed i'm just going to go ahead and put it in my sprayer now now, if you make up a big batch and you have the Q-Yaha in there, it could kind of foam up a bit. So I more mixed it in here just to show you. You can just mix straight in your tape and sprayer and then shake it. You don't have to pre-mix, pour. So let's just do this. I've got a one gallon per minute nozzle. You can use the smaller one. Usually the chapin comes with two, a half gallon per minute or a gallon per minute. And so what I'd rather do is do these all two or three times instead of accidentally do it too much in the beginning. So that'll start to take the water. I do a similar amount to each one, and then I can come back. And if they're not all exactly the same, it's not the end of the world. When you go to plant your seeds and you're done, you can always do a little weight check and just make sure they all feel similar as far as weight. It takes a minute to do right, but I just wanna make sure the moisture is in there proper and it's not gonna move the seed around. So if I were to just put the seed in and then water, it's gonna create all this movement in the soil from the water and gravity grabbing it all and moving the pores around and you could bring your seed an inch down and not know it and then you're the guy that's digging in his seeds wondering why they aren't popping and that can lead to injuring the seed or it could be stunted and get damping off because it was down below now seeds that i like will almost fight through anything right some seeds will practically go through concrete i'm sure you've seen that but we have expensive genetics we do want to make sure we get all the results so I try and tend to them like little babies. Give them everything they need. So let's see where we're at. This feels pretty good. Man, this seedling soil takes the water really well. I'm gonna go through and just really quickly hit them one more time, just to make sure we send enough water all the way to the bottom so that it's not dry down there. Because given a, you know, a day, the moisture is gonna self balance. And if it's really dry at the bottom, it'll wick it, take some of the moisture off the top away from the seed. So I wanna make sure that I get all the way to the bottom. I think these can use a little bit more. So I'm just gonna make sure that although the weight feels almost right, I'm not seeing it travel quite to the bottom. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of time. 
I'm gonna go back through and do them one more time and then I'll just make sure that it's not completely dry. And sometimes it just takes a minute. So you can always walk away if you're new to this, give yourself that extra time, come back and take a look and maybe it'll be coming out the bottom by then. If you're brand new, I encourage you to maybe do one just by itself. Make sure you think it's the right moisture, then dump it out. See what it looks like. Then maybe you're more confident that that was the right amount. You can do all of them like that. So what I'm trying to do is really get it ideal and then literally never open the dome until they're popped. And since I went slow and since this sprayer looks like it's doing a lot, but not much is coming out, I am erring on the side of caution. So don't take me doing this multiple times for just soaking your seeds, okay? So this one right here is dripping a little bit. It might be slightly heavier than the others. So I'm done. I don't want to overdo it. I'm getting just a tiny bit of moisture coming out the bottom. That's more than enough for me. And so we're good. Do the first one, the Black Dog Kush. It's the only one that I'm going to open so I don't cross any seeds over now. There's a lot of ways you can do this, okay? I've discussed many of them. I'm gonna go over the seed orientation when I take the seed out and show you the top, the bottom, and how you should place the seed, some thoughts there. However, when it comes to putting the seed in here, really they only need to be about as deep as the seed is. So a seed is about that thick. That's about the depth that you would like to go, which is like less than a quarter inch. And so you don't wanna put it too deep. And so if I were to dibble a huge hole in here and pour it in there and then cover it, it could be too deep. And the other consideration is this time I'm gonna use a tiny bit of mulch on here. So I don't have to have it, have it covered perfectly with soil because I'm gonna use mulch to cover it. That'll keep the light off of it. And then I don't have to plant so, so deep or worry about it. So today I'm gonna to leave them like this, put the seed in the center and just push it gently down with my finger instead of pre-dibbling a hole. Oftentimes I'll use the Sharpie and just put a little hole. So let's grab it, open the seed pack. Okay, that's beautiful. Look at those big seeds, gorgeous. I don't need all of those, but we're gonna pop 10. Now, if you've got a whole bunch of seeds to choose from, I like to ch choose the thickest, juiciest ones. Same with tomato seeds. But what I like to do is set it sideways like that, not up or down. This way the seed can go straight and it can basically go like this and lift sideways up. If you put the seed like this, where it's straight up and down, the seed will push its cap straight up and it'll have its hat still on, the seed hole. If you put it upside down, some people prefer that. So then the seed taproot comes out the top, turns like this, and then the seed gets forced to go through the soil, removing its cap. Sometimes they can get turned around a little bit deep in the soil. Sideways is kind of the easy way for me to do it. And then it's the best of both worlds. It always has a little bit of a side shoot and it usually drops its hat on its own when you do it that way, instead of trying to be upside down or right side up. So that's my bit of advice. I'm gonna go through and just drop the seed. The good news is it's sideways the easiest because it just drops sideways right there in the center. That's sideways, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna barely push it down and then we're gonna cover it with mulch. That's pretty much it. I will go through at the end and I just pull a little bit of cover over it so that the mulch isn't in direct contact and that's all we're gonna do. That's great. We have 10 seeds in there and I have enough, six extra. So that was a fat pack, which means I have a whole nother round for later, especially if I like these, that's gonna be epic. I'm gonna be very careful and make sure that I put these back in their container and that they stay dry. And those will go back in the fridge. I wanna cover it up and do everything that I said I'd do before I move on so I don't forget. And I wanna finally talk about all these. So I'm gonna push each one down. They're all sideways, none up or down. And I'm just barely gonna push it down. That way it's seated right there. And I can tell it's nice moisture in here. It's firm up top, so it's not gonna just get moved around. I'm barely gonna pinch to cover it, which you can kinda of see here between my hands. I'm just pinching the soil around it, tucking it in like a little baby. This is the day I really realize the season started. Like we've got to be consistent from this point out. They're no longer going to wait for us. So exciting times. Okay, I've got a dome. I just clean it with some EM5. We used these in the last one. I just put the dome over. I kind of move the cups in so that they're not going to be tipped over. That's it. I leave them completely sealed, not cracked, and you're ready to go. I'm going to do one last step, which a lot of living soil growers do. This can replace the dome if you don't have one. It works really well considerations are if you do the mulch too thick it's going to get matted down and the seed's going to be hard to pop if you do it too thin it's not really serving a purpose i think it looks beautiful it's fun to do some people even put cover crop in here but i recommend not putting cover crop till your plant gets bigger or if you're putting clones sometimes they can out compete we need to keep them secondary here's our blue oyster straw log from kevin man Persh medicinals he makes these for us they're all inoculated with the fungus it's 
it's pretty awesome. And I've moistened this just a little bit to keep the dust down, but yours will come moist. This is a bag I used last time that was just open. So I added a little bit in the bucket and I just added a little bit of moisture to make it easy. Now this is kind of fine, so I don't want it to choke any seeds out. And I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of mulch in there just to cover the seed area mainly. It doesn't have to be wall to wall perfect. And this will create like this little bit of humidity in there, a little bit of shadow from the light so that it's not directly hitting it until the seed opens. And it's kind of mimicking nature where the best seeds, like you can see over here in this bed where I sowed the cover crop, see how where it's kind of open, there's not as many seeds, their tails just getting started in there. Where here where it's through the mulch, it had the moisture that it needed and it was able to really germinate faster. So we're just kind of mimicking what nature does here. But the big thing is if you're new to this, I don't want you to overdo a really thick mulch. You can kind of stunt your seeds that way. I don't expect 100%, nature doesn't work that way, but I like it when I get it. So if I were you, I'd be happy with like 80% success. Of course, if you get 100, that's phenomenal. I love seeing that. Most of the time when you buy seeds, they don't promise 100% germination. And then that changes from year to year, depending on how old the seed is. So the germination percentage goes down each year you keep the seeds around. It's best when it's fresh. So there's the mulch, it's beautiful. I'm gonna do the last step, glue in that last part, make sure that when I put the, where I put the seed in, it's kind of sealed that last bit of moisture on there. Other thing is I like to keep it nice and warm in here. I don't want it to be like 60 degrees, right? So I'm gonna keep it in the 70s. And the dome is gonna be sealed so none of that moisture leaves here. And then I've got a light on above it. The light is really not that important until they pop, but I like to have it immediately when they do pop. So I just leave the light on. I leave it on for 18 hours a day. You can do it for 24 hours a day. It doesn't really matter. Eventually I like to get into that 18 hour cycle as I think it's easier on the seeds and it's more mimicking nature. If it's building up full of condensation on here, you might wanna just take it and shake it off and put it back on. I also do not recommend to use a heating mat. I don't recommend it. I use the dome without the heating mat. I almost never use the heating mat. If I was to use a heating mat, I'd probably remove the dome and that would be an environment where I was maybe too cold. Typically instead of a heating mat is if I'm up on a table, I'll get one of those oil heaters that have the oil in it, it's like metal. They radiate heat and they're on wheels. You can get them like at any store. You just roll it underneath the table and keep it on its lowest. Then it kind of generally warms the area as opposed to directly doing it. Living soil growers and generally for seedling, I feel like they just like to sell you that stuff. It can cause a lot of problems. You don't need the heating mat, okay? That's it. This is what we're gonna do on each one of these. Now, instead of me slowing down and, and having you watch me do every single one, I kind of want to move the autoflowers and do that right now. And then I'm gonna go just finish everything off all at once. So let's open and let's see how many seeds are in here. These have got a seal, which is pretty cool. And that just signifies that you got an official pack. It wasn't tampered with. Back in the day, the reason why this is important is there were seed banks that were kind of unscrupulous and they would basically just take seeds from breeders and heck, make seeds, whatever they wanted, call them anything, put them in whatever pack and charge all the money for it. And there was no recourse because they were overseas. And how would you really know until it's too late, six months down the line? When you work with a reputable breeder and they put a seal on it, you're really confident you're getting the right seeds. Just as I thought, there's actually five seeds in here, not three, in case you have maybe one that doesn't germinate. Like I said, it's not supposed to be 100%. That's not how nature works. So I've got five seeds, which means I'm gonna take five of these cups out of here and we're only gonna pop five for the autoflowers. And that'll keep it to what we're actually gonna use so I'm not wasteful. Now, I don't need five. I really only need four because I'm gonna have four earth boxes over there, but I wanna get all five popped in case one is runty or doesn't get going. I've got another pack, so I would probably like to do six to make sure I get four good ones, but I wanna preserve that pack so I can do a second round in here. So we're just gonna hope that we get good luck like we did the first time. First time, all of them germinated. So we'll see, I'll fill these up with soil right now and then I'll pop these, put the mulch on, and then I'll just bang the rest of these out. I'm gonna go grab some more water. I, it's that important. I'm not gonna plant these seeds till I get this moisture right and they're still too light. So I'll be right back. So I mixed up a little bit more. Just gonna make sure that I get all these properly moistened. It's really fun. The next day you'll find yourself, if you're like me waking up, jumping out of bed where normally it might be hard. And you're like, I wonder what the seeds look like. I can't wait to go take a peek. Now there's no seed in here. So I'm not worried about dislodging anything yet, but afterwards I will. I wanna take it easy. I wanna water it more, but I'm gonna give it another minute to just slowly seep in. You can see all that Kuyaha foam on top from the saponins. Be careful not to drop your seeds. I've only got five of these, so I've gotta be very careful. And again, I set them sideways, not upside down, not right side up, but sideways. To me, that's my favorite way. They always get a taproot going one way and then it can bend to stand up. I'm just setting them on the surface. This way I can make sure I see the seed. It's visually in the center. Now, the last part is I just take my finger and be careful the seed does not stick to your finger and then you go move it, okay? 
I just barely tap it so it's just underneath the surface and that's it. Barely. You don't want to do much more because we're going to have mulch and we're also going to cover them. So now to cover them, I just pinch all a little bit around the top. Just barely. I do not want to bury them. And I don't want to turn the seed like right side up. So I just barely bury it. Even if you can lightly see the seed, it's okay because we're going to come put mulch on it. And with a dome on in this soil, that would be enough. It's not going to dry out anymore. Without a dome, I like to put them just slightly lower so that I'm not worried the light dries the top and it kills the seed. I'm going to just sprinkle it on lightly and making sure that I don't have it too thick in the center where it's all matted down. I don't want my seed to rot. It'll stand up through there, no problem. Okay. Now, um, last but least, I've got to pop the Fruit by the Funk and the Soleil Levant. But since I just put the seed in and just put the mulch, I like to seal it. One little spray. Just get it sealed on top. That's it. I've got the OG dome from when we did an episode like season one, I think. Bam. So I got the fruit by the funk going in next. Beautiful. There's going to be, I think, 10 seeds in there, so it'll be perfect. I'm really excited about the fruit by the funk. Look at that. Beautiful. They're glowing. I mean, they just got this color, like blue-green almost. They look fresh. Okay, we got two extra that I'll keep for here. Okay, that's it. We're kicking off the season right. Got some really good genetics. We put a little extra care this time. Got some mulch in there. So all this stuff's been reused from the last time. You don't have to rebuy any of this stuff. You just clean your domes and trays and they look good. Beyond that, we're gonna watch these germinate and just show you as it happens. And then we'll start to talk about quadrant one where we get the auto flowers ready first. Those have got to go immediately. We'll start talking about how to reamend these beds since they've been reused. It's been really fun hanging out with you guys. It's been even more fun planting seeds and sharing it with you. I can't wait to see what these all bring. It's kind of like Pandora's box, so to speak. You just don't know like what you're gonna get out of here. And every grower that I know, it's more fun than getting clones in the sense that each one of these are gonna be unique. And there's a chance that I find something that's better than anything I've ever had in here. We're always in that pursuit. Popping new seeds gives you that drive. It gives you that something to look forward to. And it adds a lot to your life. I've got them all labeled. We'll watch and see what happens. And then we'll document the rest of it just like we always do. If you've got questions about popping seeds or anything else, you can join the Patreon, get to the Discord. You can reach out to support at buildaswell.com. We help you for free. You can check out the YouTube and keep watching these. Either way, we just wanna be here to help empower organic-minded growers with the absolute best products, free education, and a community of people who like the same stuff. So thank you, and until next time, I'll see you on the next episode.